So a couple days ago, I posted this picture on my Instagram with a couple of goals that I am wanting to complete in my YouTube career, and it seemed like you guys really liked it and wanted to see more of that content. But a couple of days before that, I posted a video of how I made a quick laundry basket animation, and it blew up. So I put the two together and realized, what if I show how I made the cork board? And that's exactly what I'm doing today. So I'll be dividing this cork board into five different parts. Each part will represent a different object that is in the final render. So let's go ahead and start with the first part. The cork board first began with the main cork piece. This piece was made up of a cube that was scaled on the Y and X axis for a rectangular shape. Then it was scaled on the Z axis for the correct thickness of the board. The next part of the cork board was the framing. I took another cube and scaled it down to the correct size for the framing. Then I went into edit mode and started grabbing the end of the cube and dragging it to the other corners. I would also make loop cuts where I'd need to extrude the cube along the bottoms, sides, and tops of the board. When doing this, make sure to turn on the transparent object settings here in the top right. This is very, very important because I forgot to do it and I had to start all the way from scratch. Once the framing and the cork board look good and finished, you can go to the shading tab, click on the board, add a material, add an image texture, click on open, use the cork texture from the description, Connect color to the color on the principled BSDF. And now your object has an image texture. You can use the same steps for the corkboard frame, but use the frame image texture from the link in the description. With the corkboard done, let's move on to the sticky note. The sticky note was actually pretty simple. I added in a plane, gave it a subsurf modifier, went into edit mode, dressed it out with loop cuts, made a loop cut in the middle, and I lifted the bottom of the sticky note up. I made both of the bottom points uneven for even more detail. In texture paint, I gave the sticky note a certain color and would write whatever I wanted on the sticky note just with my mouse. Later, I would duplicate the sticky notes and just change the texture paint for it. Quick tip. Always make sure to save your textures for your sticky note. Blender will not automatically save the textures from texture paint when you save the project. With the sticky notes done, let's move on to the push pins. The push pins were also pretty simple to make. I would add in a circle, extrude it long enough to be about the right size, selected all the top edges, press Control b to bevel, and then bring the bevel all the way down to the bottom. Then I added in a new circle, extruded it to be a cylinder, scaled it down, and placed it on top of the other circle. I selected the first circle, duplicated it, rotated it upside down, and placed it on top of the cylinder I made. I adjusted the color and material settings in the shader tab and gave it a subsurf modifier and then from there I smoothed it out. I know I could have just used a circle for a push pin since you won't able to see the major details of the pin from the front, but you would still be able to see the shadows from the pin so I decided to keep that extra detail. Now that the pin is finished, let's move on to the nameplate. The nameplate was a quick, easy idea that I thought I would add in. I started with the cube that I scaled down to get the right size for the nameplate. I then duplicated the object. I scaled the object on the Y axis and put it right behind the nameplate. The duplicated object is the wood that is behind the nameplate in the photo. I brought in another cube and scaled it down to be the two wooden pieces that are above and below the nameplate. I then went into the shader tab and changed the nameplate material to the middle image texture that is in the description. From there, I changed the wood pieces into another texture in the description, which is known as Royal Oak. Now that the nameplate is finished, let's move on to the final step, the wall. <laughs> 
For the wall, I used a plane and added an image texture to it. The image will be linked in the description, along with the other image textures. I scaled the wall up to where it would have the look of an eggshell textured wall. I then put all of the objects onto the corkboard accordingly and added screenshots with the planes into images add-on in Blender, as you will see in the final render. I added in light to the scene and placed the camera in front of the corkboard. Finally, it was ready to render. I switched to cycles, used GPU compute, and turned on denoising for the render. Then I pressed render in the top left corner and saved the final render. After all of the work and effort of making the corkboard come to life, I now have a picture to show the completion of this project and something that you guys can really enjoy and accomplish. This was a really, really fun idea that I enjoyed and maybe we can use this idea in the future for more of our goals. Also, these goals on the board can be completed by the end of the month. I know you can do it. So let's reach these goals. So subscribe, like, and let me know down in the comments below what other Blender creations you want to see. And I've already made a couple on my Instagram, SammyJoeYT. You can go check them out if you want. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.